All right, uh, chapter 2.4 is going to focus on, well, not just 2.4, but this week is going to focus on three things, subtracting fractions. Uh, if you remember last week, we actually worked on adding fractions. Uh, we're going to do one-step multiplication with decimals, uh, and we're going to do one-step division for two days, one with de decimals and one without decimals. So again, starting with fractions, just to make sure we can see what's going on. Uh, again, last week your problems were made more manageable by pretty much making sure you didn't have any denominators larger than six. Again, hopefully you took the time to get a little used to that and gain some confidence because it's pretty much the same. It's just, you know, a minus sign instead of a plus. Again, nine and five. I'm not going to go through the process because for me, again, knowing my numbers, and again, you can check this, but I'm not going to take forever on this because we've been doing this now for four weeks. Uh, nine and five. Are weird numbers and I know that 9 times 5 is 45 and I can't think of anything smaller than 45 that's multi that multiplies by 5 that would meet with 9 so that means that 45 is the number I am also going to because you already know how to fill this stuff out I'm going to do it in, in the way that you should probably do it in your own work which is I'm going to simply rename it as two separate fractions and leave the minus sign there. Again, five is gonna to turn to 45, nine is gonna to turn to 45, and that minus sign will stay. And so what we are doing now, as I am renaming them, again, you know how to answer this from last week, uh, five times nine makes 45, so multiply that by nine. Nine times five makes that 45, so multiply that by five, and there you go. Now we do 81 minus 10, which is 71, and again, leave the bottom number the same and that would be how you answer it. So I'm not gonna go through the thing of what's the number and then find the make the first one match. You know how to do that if you've already gotten past last week's stuff. So again, I'm, not, I'm going to try to keep moving you towards getting better and, and more efficient with this stuff so you can actually do it and not have to waste a bunch of time and energy doing so. Same thing here. But 8 and 6, again, even number and even number, typically that means that they probably will meet earlier than 48, which is what 8 times 6 is. So I will do the 8. So 8, 16, 24. Oh, in my brain, I remember 24 does go with 6, which means that 24 is a number. Again, so what I usually do whenever I actually work with fractions is I just rewrite both of those denominators down there and copy whatever signs there. I think about what makes 8. Again, you would have done 24 divided by 8, but I know my numbers, and I know 8 times 3 makes 24, which means that makes 21. I know that 6 times 4 makes 24, which makes that 4. 21 minus 4 is 17 over 24, which would be the end of all that. So again, following directions on the Math Excel when they ask for all that stuff, but again, it's just... I'm going to keep on kind of moving forward with the way that I work these out so I don't keep treating it as if, you know, it's something that we can't do. In terms of solving today, again, we're just going to move one step forward and closing, close, consider our work with decimals. Remember that our decision-making process is still the same. We just need to rely more on our calculator to ease the stress of the actual value. So there's nothing tougher today. If you understood how to do uh, multiplication problems last week, then you probably will understand this. It's just a matter of making sure you don't mess up. But again, same thing, what values with S, in this case, 21.3. And so then they want you to move it. And remember, if this is being multiplied, remember that the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of subtraction is addition. That's supposed to be two arrows, by the way. The opposite of multiplication is division. And so if you want to get rid of multiplication, we divide by whatever is there. And so when that happens, the S comes down. I now just have to do 230.4 divided by 21.3. And I believe you just round to the um, that number there. 230.04, there we go. Divided by 21.3, because I thought it was supposed to be a nice number. There you go, 10.8. And so that would be what you do. Again, there's your four boxes. I don't think I need to go over all that because, again, it's just pretty much what you did last week with multiplication and adding decimals to it. So this is going to be a little faster of a video because there's really not a lot of explanation that you should need. Again, with this, 250.21 equals 19.1 T. What value is with T? Of course, 19.1 is with T. 
So solve by moving the value as shown in your lesson example. Again, if I want to get t by itself and I want to get 19.1 out, I'm going to divide by 19.1. So 250.21, 19.1 gives me 13.1 is my answer, which again goes over here because that's my number and t stays over here because it was on the right. So just again, make sure you're not just assuming that you can just move numbers and variables from one side to the other. You've got to respect whatever side that they are on. It's important that we don't forget our original work. Uh, so your homework and quiz this week will include the problems from last week and a real quick review of what we've learned. Uh, we saw these here where it said x plus 82.9 or something like that equals 173.1. The value with x is 82.9. How do you move this 82.9 if it's being added? Remember the opposite of addition is subtraction. And so we will bring down X and figure out whatever 173.1 minus 82.9 is, which is 90.2. And so again, there's your four boxes. It'll be the same thing as what we did before. And then one more before we get ready to go to our work. Same thing. The only difference is it's on the other side. So remember, if you have a negative, that you must put that negative with that number when they ask what's with it. How do you move a minus 53? And that is by adding 53. I think we can add this up. That's not so bad. That's 9, 6, and 9. So 96.9 .9 equals D, and that would be it. So again, make sure you work to make these decisions more instinctual. Uh, when you move forward next week, it's important you don't need to think about how to move the values. Just be sure to email questions so I can continue to help me master the skill. Again, this is key. You don't want to still be saying, you know, what's the opposite of addition or what's the opposite of subtraction or do I, you know, is this multiplication or is this division? You want to be able to look at it kind of like you see me do, recognize where the number is, figure out how to move it, and then take that step to actually move it. Uh, again, just make sure to make an, make an attempt before asking for help. Again, the first step to improving is learning not to be afraid to make a mistake or two. The funny thing is, the people who have messed up the most know the most. Uh, those of you who are afraid to mess up, that's why you don't know what you think you should know because you're too afraid to mess up. Those people who are willing to actually go out and mess up a little bit, actually mess up a lot, learn a whole lot more because they've experienced it. So other than that, like I said, just good luck on this. Like I said, email me if you have any questions. Just make sure you show me the work that goes with it. I'll talk to you later.